Welcome to MacroCode. If you are new to this channel, consider subscribing and watching our previous uh, videos. So today we are going to do a very interesting video on uh, Blazor. So Blazor is a .NET web system that runs uh, in the program and it's mostly controlled by C Sharp and uh, Razor uh, pages. So uh, we are going to create a new uh, Blazor app, uh, do some uh, crude operation using SQL Server. So I'm using Visual Studio 2022. I've already launched my Visual Studio and to create a new Blazor app, we are going to uh, create a new project. Then on, on this side, we are going to choose Blazor Server uh, app. So we are going to create a Blazor Server app that runs a server-side uh, application in a SP.NET Core uh, uh, project. So, after you have chosen a blazer, then we're going to uh, next, then you can say employee crude operation. You can say employee crude blazer. Blazer. So then next, then you are going to use .NET 7. Then on the authentication type, we leave it as none, then configure for HTTPS, leave it as it is, then create. So our project is creating. Then you'll be able to see our Blazor crude app. So you can see we have our Blazor crude app. Here we have the uh, program.cs file. We have the app settings.json where we'll be linking our application with our database. We have the data where we have the uh, classes and the service. Then we have the pages. So we have uh, the, the index, fetch data. So if we launch these, we're able to see our, our Blazor app with the default uh, pages. So it, ha it already have the default template. So you can see, hello world, welcome to our new app. And you can see if you click on the counter, you can actually, if you click this, you are able to see the counter, then fetch data, you're able to see the data for uh, weather forecast. So for today's video, you're going to create a crude uh, operation using uh, SQL. So you're going to create an application to add employees. So on our data folder, create a class for employees. So we're going to create employee. Then inside the employee, you're going to define some fields. So public int ID. Then you can have this as first name. First name of an employee. Last name. Then you can you can do this is a middle name and say this is middle name, then this is last name. Then another thing that you can do, you can do address. You can also do postal code. So you can close this. You can also do, let's do email, email address. You can also do city or phone number, phone number, then we can also do city. Then another thing we can also do is uh, designate, designation for the employee, designation for the employee. Designation. Then here you can do you can have this our as our key. So we have created our <coughs> our model. So the next thing that we need to do is to create our application DB context that will link our application with the database. So we are going to create a folder. We're going to create a folder called uh, uh, 
context so let's create a folder called uh, can even yeah let's just create a folder called context then inside here let's create a class called application db context application db context then add so this one you're going to in let's create our constructor then here you are going to inherit a db context context so this one you are going to install uh, entity framework core so if you just click that it will install the latest version so you can see our packages here under packages we have uh, entity framework core already installed so on a constructor we need to pass db context say db context options then we have our application db context then we provide here options let me do this let me just say here base then options so that is it so this one will be it should be like this this one should be also like this so that is it <coughs> so we have created our application db context so to ensure that our database is now uh, created we'll, we are going to now have our db set here then we pass our employee uh, model then the name of our database which will be employees uh, that is it so that is how you create the application db context so the next thing that you need to do is to provide some uh, connection to our app settings to our database so on our app settings you do connection stream then that is it then we need to paste in some connections here copy that so we have our so we have our, our default connection, then our desktop, then uh, I'm using SQL Express, so this is my instance, then uh, database will be server, uh, Blazor, then the, the trusted connection that is set to allow multiple active result, then trust server certificate is set to true. So this is what you need to set to app settings.json. Then we need to remember we are now connecting to our Blazor database, so we need to ensure we have that database in our in our SQL Server. So I'm using using SQL Server Management Studio to manage and write queries. So I'm connecting to my instance. So on our database, so I had a database called Blazor. So I'll just delete this so that we don't have. So I'll recreate it, new database, then I'll say Blazor. Okay, so that is it. So we have our Blazor uh, database, then tables. We don't have any tables. So that is it for our app settings. So the next thing that we need to do is now to create an app employee service that we, are, you, we will be using to... Uh, do the crude operation that is to now uh, get employees records insert employee re records and even get uh, update and even delete so on our data create employee service create a new class then call it employee service employee employees service service dot cs call it service dot cs so after we have done that we need to provide our constructor that is it then 
here we have so the next thing we need to do is to inject our inject our application db context so it's a application application db context then here we say application db context let's go then we'll do here application db context then application db context so our application db context will be equal to that so that is it so <clears throat> our next method is to pull employee data so you are going to create a class a function to actually pull employee data so a task so we say we want a list of employees so this will be a list of employees then we can call this function get all employees so that is it so this is a function then inside this function we need to return a list of employees remember so we will do return with application application db context dot employees remember our table is employees then at list so this is the table and you want a list of employees so this will give us a, a list of all the employees so we can comment this so that you're able to know get all employees list so the next function we will copy that so the next function that we need to do is to insert so when inserting we want to return a boolean if it has gone through so we say add new employee then we need to pass our employee model we call this employee then on inserting we'll say await application db context employees dot add say dot add async then we add our employee employee then here we say await application db context application db context dot save changes async then we return true so if that is that goes well so what is the issue with this one let's see definition of get await public async task employee we done this yeah this is to sync we say it's to to list async yeah that's fine so this will add our new employee say new employee so this one is say add new employee record so this is a function that will add our new employee record so the next function is we need to get an employee by an id assuming we want to search so it will retrieve we want to retrieve only a single record so it will give us an employee record then we say get employee get employee by id then here we need to pass an integer which is the primary key of that employee or the employee number then we say so we need our employee model say employee so you need to define that and we need to assign it to await application db context dot employees so that is our database so let's clear this so employees then you want to find find first or default async then you need to pass the id so we say where the id is equals to the id that we have supplied then this function should return our employee record so that is it so this is saying converting 
think that is fine so this one is get employee record by id then the next thing so this one should be get employee by id so the next function that we need to do is to update assuming we want to update an employee record so so we'll do so we want to return a boolean then this one will be update employee can call it update employee de details then we need to pass eh? we need to pass the updated employee data employee then after that we say so we'll do application db context dot employees update so we want to update it and we pass our employee mode then we say await application db context to save changes async then we return return true so we can get this to that so this one will update our employee data update employee data so then the final function will be to delete we want to delete an employee record so this one will be delete employee record so we'll say delete 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 employee so we will pass our <coughs> employee data then application the db context then we will say employees or remove so we are going to remove the employee then we save the changes so that is it so we are done so we have these functions get all the list add a new employee get employee by an id update employee details then delete an employee data so the next thing that you are going to do remember we had already created our application db context with our database called employees but we don't have the database i mean the tables uh, on our database so what we need to do is to apply migrations so what we need to do before we we do that on our app settings before we do that on our program.cs we need to include some configurations so the first thing that we need to do is we need to add our service for employee service so we copy that then we'll say employee employee service so we need to add our service there then <clears throat> before we do anything we need to have I think this one should come down here then you can we need to have the connection to, to the database so what we need to do is say builder dot service dot add db context then we supply our what is the name of our application it is application db context application db context then we say item item dot use sql so we are using sql use sql use sql server so we'll see why this is not uh, showcasing because you have not installed some nuggets then we'll say builder so we want to get the name of our connection configuration dot get connection string eh? then this connection string 
should be should be what we define under app settings so this is the connection string default connection string name eh? that is what we are supposed to pass here so after we have done that we need to close this and we do this so you can see our user sql server is not installed because we need to install a certain nugget so if you hover here and do this let's see you can just install the nugget come here then manage nuggets then say sql server so we are supposed to install entity framework core .sql server so we install that accept that then it is installed so if you come to our program.cs we need to import it so we do that and it should be fine so you can see now our connection string is already defined so that is what we <coughs> that is the only thing that was uh, supposed to be done then the next thing now is to do the migration so we come to tools nugget package manager package console then uh, let me just expand these so in our package manager so we need to add migration we use the add migration command migration then the name of our migration so if you want to so we can just do initial initial migration we can call it initial migration so if you press enter there's something wrong is not recognized so because this is uh, not recognized there is certain uh, nuggets that we need to install again so come here then say tools huh? you need to install tools it's called microsoft entity framework core tools so install that so if it's already installed you'll be able to see a green icon there so come back to our console so come I get my packet manager then console then run the same migration so you can see add migration is started that succeeded and uh, there is something again it says an error of Kyle accessing microsoft extension or things continue without the application service some services are not able to be constructed error while validating the service data employee service lifetime cannot consume scoped service so our service here we need to do something this one will be add change our service type to add scoped that's fine so if we come here again and run our migrations it is done so <clears throat> it has completed our migrations and if you can see we now have a new folder called migrations so you can see we have a new folder called migrations and our, the file that we created <coughs> the name we passed on our migration called initial migration it will actually create a file with the name of the migration so you can see initial migration so if you click on it you'll see that it is going to create a table called employees with all these fields our primary key there and all the fields that we defined and if it is there then we will need to uh, delete so so let's let's start so we need to update so we'll say update database so this one will update our it will update our our database with the new table but now if you can if you come to our database our, our our database and refresh it we don't have tables still so this one now will uh, uh, enforce the tables on our database so if we press enter so it is succeeded so it is creating you can see those commands so these are the commands create table employee id this is actually an sql uh, statement so you can see it is creating then it's done and it is now inserting 
our on our ef migration table it is starting inserting our migrations that we have done so if you come to tables then refresh you'll see you have two tables ef migrations that keep track of, of our migrations that we have done so if you run it you'll be able to see our initial migration name with the product version then our table employees which is now empty so you can see we have the first name middle name last name post name postcode address email address phone number city and designation so that is what we have done so this is actually what is usually called code first approach so we have created our models then we have now proceeded to our which will actually define our database so we are good to go what next to uh, what is the, uh, next is we need to create our our views so come to pages then new we need to create a new reza component so reza component then we'll say employees list so we want to to have a page for employees list so add that page so you can see it is employees a list so on this employee list we need to define some things so at the top here we need to define uh, the URL of our page. So our page will be will be called. So so this one will 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 call these employees. Then we need to uh, use using we need to use uh, employees reza dot data need that folder because we on this folder we have some classes. Then we need to inject now our employee service remember our employee service is the one that will be having the the function to get our employees list so we'll say employees service dot no we'll, we'll provide a name of the employee service we call it employees service so that is it now we need to provide a link nav link call it nav 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 link so this is the link to create <coughs> new employee record so so this is like a button so you provide a button then you can call nav link then uh, this will have a url href so you can say add employee then inside here we need to provide like an icon span class call io oi then oi plus plus then we need to close these you can say aereo hidden hidden is true then we need to close and you can say add new employee so that is our function so the next thing that we need to do is on our code down here we need to define the we need a list of employees so we'll say list then we define the employee employee model employee then you say object so, so this one will close this then we say this emp object so on this object you can say emp ob object you can call it emp object then we need to you can close this we need to to create a function that will actually give us the list of employees I think then we say task on initiate on initialize on initialize on initialize I think so this is a function then we do this 
then we say we assign our emp object some values. So this is equal to await. Then we say task dot run. Then inside here we say we want the, we want the list of employee service to give us get all employees. Should be able to do that. So this one should be this. Take this, then we should be able to close this. So this one will give us a list of employees. So this one should be on finish show list. I think so that is the correct wording so that is it so our amp object and even saying it to mal this is equals to mal you can leave it as it is object so after we have done that these now will be having our list of employees so we need now to people to populate so here we can say if 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 our emp object that we have defined there is null is null so what should we do so what we need to do is we can provide some say amp no amp no so that is it that is the keyword i'm looking for it will be amp m then we do this here we can say give us the word loading Mm. So um, that should be like then this thing. It will be closed like this. Yeah, so that is fine. So else, if there is data, what we need to do is to populate the list of employees. So we'll create a table here. We can call table. Uh, we can close it. Then our table headers. We can close it. Then our table row. Header. So this one will call em employee number. So we'll copy this and you have it here. Then you can say employee name. So this will be a combination of first name and middle name. Then you can call, you can have uh email address then you can also have designation designation then you can have phone number phone number so after you have done that on our table header to here without we want to define our table body table body on our table body we need to loop we'll say at for each 
variable amp in amp object here so we need to get all the lists so our table row then we define our table data so the first one should be at employee dot so our first one is number so we'll have our id here so the next one should be our name so <clears throat> our name remember on our employee class we have the last name middle name so we want to provide a complete first name and middle name and last name so what we need to do we'll define another one and we call it full name so this full name will be a combination of so we'll do this eh? it'll be a combination of so we'll do that then inside here we do this then we say first name then we also do this we say middle name sorry middle name then inside here again we last name so this one will give us now the full name of the employee so on our view we'll now have full name full name so the next table data here will be we need to define email address so this one we'll call email the next one will be designation so the next one so so this one will be designation the next one will be form number form form number so we have defined our our list so <clears throat> So the at so if you can see on our view now the at page is actually defines our navigation then the injection of the service uh, that we have done is uh, employee service and the code down here you see down here we have the code is where we are, we, we are calling the methods to bind all the values inside our Reza component so this is where we call all the methods to do that so on our shared folder so if we run this application currently we are able we are not able to navigate to the employees list so to do that we need to we need to uh, define our employees list on this navigation side so how we do that you come to our our shared folder then nav menu so on the nav menu you'll be able to see we have now the fake data so we can copy these and create our own <laughs> we call now employees then list you can call it employees list then on the employees list we'll put the name of our navigation this one you see this one that is what we are supposed to provide here so we'll see employees so if we launch this again you can see we now have our employees list so if you click it you'll see we don't have any data so we have the employees list employee number name email address designation and phone number we don't have any data and we have not created a new uh, razor page for addition of a new employee so what we need to do we proceed to add the add new employee razor page here then razor component then we say add add new employee dot razor then that is it so we define our navigation again as we did so we come here we say at page at page so it will be equal to so this one will be 
our navigation will be add new employee then we need to use uh, using employee razor the data then we need to inject inject our service in inject we need to inject employee service we need to provide the name of the employee service then here we need to inject inject we need to inject the navig so this one will define our navigation manager navigation manager then we say navigation manager so that is what we need to do then on our code here so what we need to do here remember we need to add a new employee so we'll define an object object yeah, new object employee then i call this new new object then we'll say we need to now create a function to add an employee so we'll say protected async async and we'll say void say add new employee details then we say this is a function then we need to await employee service that we had created then dot add new employee then remember we need to pass our object so we'll see how we assign values to that object then after we have done that we need to navigate back navigation manager dot navigate to so we need now to navigate to our list so what was the navigation name of our employees list so this is the navigation so we need to provide that here so you do this then you you paste it there that is it so the button for adding will call these details you can say actually create you can change this to create new employee then we need to provide another function to cancel in case you want to cancel we can call void cancel so this is another function then we do this then on the cancel we navigate it back so you can copy this and paste it here so that is it so we'll be having to these two buttons on our employees list so what we need to do now is to create our form so let's break this so to create our form we need to create form then close then div div so on our div we need we need uh, so this one you can have a class for a row then inside here we can also define another div you can say class call md then eight then you can close this then we want to now define the fields so we'll say div class form group form group then we need to define the label label for name then class control label 
then you need to close this and you can say this is our first name so the input we need to define an input then we'll be reusing this we'll be just be copying input then for form and call it first name then class form control so we need to bind it now to our <coughs> data so we'll be using bind then we need to assign it the value so it will be at obj dot remember our first name so we need to do that so this is what we need to do so the next thing we need to copy this now and replicate so this one will be we can have this as first name so this one will be middle name so I have this as middle name then here will be middle name then our obj will be middle name we again paste this one will be last name this one will be last name this one will be last name our obj as well so this will be getting the input from the user sorry so this one should be last name the next thing is we paste this again then should be email then we call this email address call this email address then we call this email address that is it the next one is our we call the we can have the phone number number phone number phone number phone number then we do that then you need to say another another one is let's confirm so you have done first name middle name last name another one is post code postal code postal code and do postal code and postal code then postal code next one should be address address sorry this one should be postal code this one should be address 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 The next one should be we have done email address for number city then designation so we'll do city city this one should be city this one should be city then you can have the next one called designation designation uh, designation sorry designation this one should be designation <clears throat> then we have our final one now designation so the next thing that we need to define now is our 
is our is our buttons to add so let's create our div here plus arrow let me say div class call in the form div class form group then we need to now provide the inputs <coughs> which are the buttons input type button class btn btn primary we close that you can copy these and replicate down here then you can say at on click so on click so we want to define the action event so we'll do that then we'll say it should trigger this button see this one so we'll copy this here and paste it here so that is what should happen and we need to provide the value of our button value what our button will be called you can say save employee then we can do the same for our cancel at on click on click on click sorry equals to we will be using this for cancel so at cancel button then you provide the value of our button you can call it cancel so that is it guys on how to define so what's wrong with this says yes i will do say protected can change that to void async async void come out with that way so that is fine so we now have our add so you can say this add new employee employee so that is it so this is our form so we need to ensure that our navigation on our employees list is actually referencing the correct you see should reference the correct uh, reference so we now have that so if we execute this now you can see employees list if we do that we have this so if we click add you see it is giving us the first name middle name and last name so you can see the ui is not that good so let's provide the first name james Kimani, Mbugwa, test at gmail 0714 so postcode can provide anything city nairobi designation developer so if we save you see it's not doing anything so there is an issue somewhere that we need to check so let's come here to our form so we confirm something here so on our employees 
So the first thing class that you need to define is our table is not looking good. So you can call this table, table bordered. Then uh, that should be fine now. So if we run this, you can be able to see that our table now looks good. Yeah. You can try to have it just as table, you see. So let's try to, to see first what is the issue here. Yeah, that's fine. Employee name, so our table looks now nicer. So if we go to our form, we need to, to ensure that also our fields looks a bit good. So our form, so our class, DAV class row, DAV class MD, so that is it. So then our, our label, control label. Yeah, you can see our form controls, we did a very wrong. So this one should be like these form controls. He did something wrong there, so you can correct that. Uh, you do that. You do this. That is fine. Then our buttons. And confirm our buttons also is type of a type button, then class is that. So you can do some. Uh, danger so this is to cancel then uh, this one is not that's what we intend so that is should be that way then that is the uh, details then our our cancel should be like that then you can try again our injection should be fine so employees our table looks fine so if you click you can see now our action here looks a bit good postal code seems you have not altered that yes so you can do this so you can again try to run employee list fine uh, good so you can see there we now have a good input so we can save james bugwa karanja tests at email at gmail.com Zero seven, you do that. Postcode code, see address, city, Nairobi. Then you say developer. So if we click save, our data has been saved. You can see now we have uh, employee number one, employee name. We see we have the full James Mbugwa Karanja, then email, test, developer, and the number. We can add another employee. So Badija, James, Opium, then test2 at gmail.com, 07, we do that, code, we do that, this city, Nairobi, then designation, software, developer, we save, you can see, it has saved so that's very interesting so up to there guys if you are new to this channel consider subscribing like our video and comment if, in case you have any question then we will be good to answer so the next thing that we need to do is assuming we want to edit this data how will we do in our application that is a blazer so let's dive in so on our employees list page we need to provide an 
a section for action. So you'll do table header, then you can call these actions. Then at the bottom here, we need to provide another table data. Then we provide the buttons. So provide the buttons class. So we'll call this nav link. Nav link. Then href. So we need to provide an, a new a new page that will do the editing. So for now we can just leave it as it is, then we can close this. Then inside here, we can now provide the spam class, then uh, icon, OI, OI, then this will be pencil, mm -hmm. then aereo, hidden, will be true, then we provide the name, so we can close this, then we provide the name, we can say edit. So that is fine. So we can copy these as well. Or we can we can have these as different. We can say this edit. Then we can have another one called delete. Action. Eh? Delete. So here we'll do this. So we'll copy our table header. Then this one should be trash. Yes, then we can call this delete. You can also provide some uh, class. Uh, and to provide some class, you can call this BTN. BTN primary. We can no no no. So let's do this. Let's cancel this. So we want some class here. This one can have this as danger. Hi. So if we run this, we expect to see these two buttons. So let's run. Currently, we we have two records. There we are. So you can see we have the edit and the delete uh, functions. So we need to add now another page. So we need to add another page for editing. So we'll create a, a new Razor component. Then we'll call this uh, edit employee. Employee. Enter. So what we need to do, we can copy the add employee form. Eh? Let's just copy. Then paste this on our edit employee form. But now we need to change something. So we'll call this edit new employee, edit employee, edit employee. Then we need to change our navigation. So we'll call that uh, edit employee. So you can replace this. So we have these as it is, then navigation, then service, that's fine. Then our form should be the same. So the next, the what we need to add only is the, you need to add the, the ID. So you can do this, then you can, if you want to see the ID, so you can call this ID, ID, can employee number. So then we can, provide the ID here. Then the others are fine, but we need to change the the actions now on our code. So remember when we are editing this, we are passing a parameter, okay? if you remember on our functions. So we need to define uh, the ID that we should be supplying public, which is a string id so we need to do that get set so this is actually our parameter so you can annotate this with parameter 
we can close this that's fine then our object as we had defined should be fine so <clears throat> here we will do uh so we'll copy this we need to initialize something here so we'll say task on initialized on initialized async so this will be override override async then remove that on initialized async then we say our object we need to assign some values on this object should get should get the record that we are editing task dot run so we can close this then we say employee so this one should be employee service eh? that we have defined up there service yeah, we defined yes these are so should come here this one should be like this employee service dot we need to get the employee by id you remember this function then we need to pass our so we need to convert convert to int to int 32 then we need to supply our id the parameter that we have just defined then we need to so that should be fine what's wrong here Do a fast with this so that we don't contradict things. No, 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 it's not that. Have we altered anything here? It says OBJ. Mm. So OBJ is new. This parameter of ours code. Public string ID. Okay, I see. So these are let's see first. Let's move this. We see. Says unexpected closed. There is something we have missed out that we need to close. So, first thing, our function here we need to pass an ID. I'll call this ID. Then we'll do this. Then that is fine, this is fine. Then form mm -hmm. our OBJ is an issue with our OBJ. So this is closing that, this is closing that, this is closing that. So we need to we define that employee. Okay.
let's undo let me just copy this let me undo let's see the way the issue is okay i think i've seen so the issue is here somewhere here so what we need to do we have defined our id so we need to declare first our parameter on our navigation page so that's fine so let's handle the issue is at the bottom here so we say protected override async task then on initialized async so this is a function so we close this then employee.service.get get employee by id then we need to pass our, our id convert to, to int then we pass our id we close it sorry we close it then we, we do this then our error is gone so our uh, initialize async so she protected override async task so this will be on initialized I think I think that was the issue. Then we need to create a function for updating. So protected async void. You can say update employee. Then we need to pass so await employee service dot update. So we need to update details. We pass our OBJ which has the uh, uh, details here then we navigate to employees then you in case you want to cancel we cancel with that so there's an error somewhere here yeah we have updated our function now it is not great so we'll take this and replace with this one and replace with this one then here we can change this to update employee so our function is complete with the relevant details so we can proceed and add a delete razor page so add new component razor page then you can call it delete employee delete employee then add so for this one we need to provide the details for the employee so we can copy the edit button details then paste this on the uh, delete then on the delete page we can provide the navigation as delete employee then we, we provide the id navigation then this will be calling delete employee then on our row so for the form group we are providing that then the input we are not now doing the input so we'll do labels so for these labels we will provide the details so we'll do this then we actually do that then we will bind so under the labels we will bind so that is the change that we do so we'll do not binding but obj dots so we'll do the same here label I close it I remove these others move up to here copy this then paste it here Remove these ones. We'll do the same for middle name. Label. Do that. 
copy this here yeah. then we do again label for the last name remove this copy the obj paste it there uh, label close that is it close this paste it here move this we do another one here label copy this as well paste it here this could be this here this logo this logo So that is it. Then you now provide a button for clicking. So before that, <coughs> we need to do some initialization here. So you have initialized our OBJ. Uh, you get employee by record. Then you need now to update this to perform the delete action. Delete employee. Then on this one, we say delete employee. Then we pass the OBJ, then and say delete employee record. Then that is delete employee, then we navigate back. So <clears throat> our delete employee record should be called by our functions here. Then we can change this to delete employee. That's fine. So we now have our delete employee razor page. So we need to bind this to our employee list actions so that you are able to navigate to these pages. So if you go back to employee list, remember our references, we had left them blank. So we need to update it. So you see here, we had left them blank. So we need to now provide the navigation which is uh, for edit is employee then we provide the you provide the id dot id then we also do the same for delete uh, we do that then we provide the id amp dot id so that is it for the actions so if we launch our application we should be able to navigate now to these three two pages delete and the edit so employee list you see we have our record so if we click edit it will take us to our edit page so you see edit employee our id is this employee name middle name last name all the data is here so if we change this to test one 
so that you're able to note test one test one then we save so you can see it has updated our employee record we can update this also test two test two test two then we update you see it is test one test one test two test two so it has updated so if you want to delete you can see we have our data if we pass delete it will remove if we do that again it will delete so we can add a new employee test one test one test two test one test at gmail.com zero seven Nairobi developer we save it has saved we add another employee James Kimani Mbugwa test at gmail zero seven it is it Nairobi developer Deve developer save we do again John Karanja Mwangi test gmail.com zero seven Nairobi developer so that is how you do crude operation in uh, uh, blazer so if you liked our video comment down below subscribe share and hit that uh, notification bell so that when you post new videos you are able to uh, get notified so thank you for watching and subscribing to our channel uh, see you in our next uh, videos